In an Instagram live stream, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez responded to the claims made by the Politico article about how she is, you know, um, pivoting a little bit towards being less divisive and trying to work with Democrats as opposed to to, you know, challenging them at every step of the way. And she responded by basically dismissing the concerns of progressives. Take a look. Oh, if anything, I've only gotten more ardent in my positions, but I do think it's funny that uh, all these folks that one day are like, keep your third eye open, manufacture consent, are the same ones who fall the fastest for these ploys. Yeah, I think that this tweet put it best. I guess y'all missed that part of manufacturing consent where Chomsky calls Nancy Pelosi his political mama bear. Exactly. Now, I get the point that she's trying to make. I believe that the media would, of course, want nothing more for than the left to eat itself and attack AOC and push her further into the arms of the Democratic Party establishment. However, the article was written in part by Holly Otterbein, and um, that's kind of an insult to her, as she's one of the better reporters at Politico. And what she mentions here are several facts. These aren't, you know, things that she made up. This isn't her analysis. These are facts that she presented us with in this article. You called Nancy Pelosi mama bear. Now, maybe, you know, that's something that we can dismiss. Maybe I'm being a little bit too petty, but I don't think kissing the ass of the person who has laughed at you, essentially, and tried to marginalize you within Congress is a good idea. She called your Green New Deal the Green Dream or whatever. So, trying to play nice with her and, you know, calling her the mama bear, I think that that's problematic. I think that it legitimizes someone who the left should absolutely view as the enemy, because Nancy Pelosi, quite frankly, is our enemy. On top of that, the article mentions how you're not endorsing primary challengers who are taking on incumbent Democrats. That's an issue. Address that. Additionally, the article cites how you factually, this isn't made up, decided to get rid of more radical members of uh, your your team, like uh, Corbin Trent, Shaikat Chakrabadi, and replace them with establishment-approved choices. You also scolded Bernie Sanders supporters for not being civilized enough. Now, I'm not saying that you're a sellout, but what I'm saying is that these are very big red flags, and I think that you should address them, and I think that you should pay respect to the movement that got you elected. Without progressives, you wouldn't be in that position, so at a minimum, even if you think these claims are laughable, even if you think, you know, our fears are a bit much, you at least owe us the respect to not laugh and try to gaslight us by saying, oh, Noam Chomsky, manufacturing consent. No, that's not what this article is trying to do. That's not what this article is trying to do. There are legitimate concerns, red flags that it would be nice for you to address. Now, you don't have to, but to just kind of laugh it off, I find that insulting because we worked really hard to get you elected. Now, again, I'm not saying that you're selling out or anything like that. I'm overall just, I'm irritated with the strategy that you're choosing to pursue because I know that you think that working with the establishment and being less divisive is going to put you in a better position to get policies like Medicare for All passed, but that shows that you fundamentally misunderstand politics in America. Because the reason why Nancy Pelosi and corporate Democrats aren't choosing to back policies like Medicare for All isn't because progressives are too impolite. It's not because, you know, you're not taking Nancy Pelosi out to dinner and kissing her ass enough. It's because she has corporate donors that pay her to be against these policies. So changing up your tone, being more civilized, that is not going to impact policy outcomes at all. So what you have to do is name and shame these politicians until they are uh, afraid to go against the movement. I mean, at first, AOC, she was, you know, she was putting pressure on leadership and other Democrats, and that was a really effective strategy because they were worried. There were articles that I shared on this program where members of Congress didn't want to, you know, um, offend AOC, if you will. They didn't want her horde of Twitter followers going after them, so they tried to, you know, play it safe and uh, not speak up or only talk on the condition of anonymity if they wanted to uh, talk shit about AOC. So your strategy, the one that you're pursuing now, you may think it's going to help you, but it's not. But here's the thing, we can disagree on strategy. That's perfectly fine. But I think that you owe us an explanation 
And if you don't want to say anything at a minimum, don't laugh off the claims or the legitimate concerns that people have that were brought up in this article, rightfully so, by Holly Otterbein. Like, to just kind of like disregard the concerns that progressives have, I view that as a slap in the face. Because again, we did everything in our power to help get you elected. I brought you on this show to interview you, to tell my viewers to donate to your campaign. So we helped you. So we feel like we're a part of this together. So for you to just kind of disregard us now, it's, it's a little bit uh, frustrating to say the least. Like, you should be trying to pay it forward. Like once you get in, you shouldn't close the door behind you. Still help other progressives running. Endorse Cory Bush. What are you doing? Endorse, you know, uh, the other progressives that are running. I've had 30 progressives on my program and you're choosing to endorse uh, only the safest choices. The only one that she endorsed that I've had on my program was same Elise Lopez. So I just, I don't, I don't think that this is going to help you by, you know, um, kind of brushing aside the concerns of progressives that I think are legitimate and, you know, getting cozy with the establishment. And I'll repeat that I don't think that she is a sellout, but we don't want you to go that, down that path to where being a sellout is possible, to where you become compromised, to where you get a little bit friendly with the establishment and they start to influence your worldview as your staffers can do. It happened with Elizabeth Warren. So that's all I'll say. Um, AOC is uh, a good politician, um, so long as she's fighting for Medicare for all and all the policies that I, uh, that I agree with. But if the strategy doesn't pan out well, and I don't think it will, then, um, we told you so. But I mean, if you think you know best, if you truly believe that kissing the ass of Nancy Pelosi is the best strategy, all right, we'll just have to agree to disagree. But when we bring up these concerns and we vocalize our disagreements, at least pay us the respect to not be condescending during our Instagram live streams and dismiss our concerns as, uh, you know, we're falling for the media trap. You know, we're smarter than that. And I would expect you to know that.